Hi everyone, Sebastian Reynolds here. Thank you for listening in. And this is podcast number three. So I'm talking to my friend Marcus Corbett. Marcus is an old friend of mine and he's just spent the last 15 to 20 years working in India, working with musicians there, kind of developing his music. He's a folk guitarist and singer. And as you'll hear him talk about, he spent many, many years developing this understanding and relationship with Indian classical music, both in terms of vocal and also tabla and rhythm. So yeah, it's just great to speak to him and give people an opportunity to hear about what, what he's what he does and what he's been doing for the last however long. And, and also just to say again, thank you. Uh, it's been really interesting launching the first two podcasts this week and had some really nice feedback and and some ideas for how to improve it and to keep developing so thank you just thank you very much and also my my ep just came out nihilism is pointless on faith and industry so if you hadn't had a chance to check that out yet then please do so but yeah, sebastianreynolds.co.uk is my website and for Marcus, it's marcuscorbett.com, I believe. And I'll share some links. We talk about links related to what we talk about in the show will be in the information box on the YouTube links. So yeah, thank you very much for listening and see you soon. Um, so, hello, Marcus. Good evening. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm all right, thank you, Seb. I hope you are too. Good, good. Okay. Well, for the benefit of the people listening at home, could you please just just give a bit of your background, assuming no knowledge, assuming the people listening haven't heard of you or heard you before. So, just just talk from the beginning. How did you start getting into music? Just to, like a little preamble. Getting into music. Ah. Uh. I, I listened to, to a wind-up ceramic music box playing Uncle Tobley and all, my grandfather's. I couldn't tell you how, how old I was. I don't know. I, I, it doesn't, it, it's, not, it's not something um, usual route, I suppose. Piano it's, as a f- six-year-old, uh, a bit of trumpet when I was 12, and by which time the music teacher had had an affair with the headmaster, and although I showed some promise apparently, so she uh, she jumped ship. So there was an interruption there, and uh, and then uh, musical appreciation classes. I got lucky at school. There's a lot of concerts to go to, uh, classical, in this case, and uh, a very wide, broad. My wide-minded music teacher, who introduced us to anything and everything, pretty much. Actually, that's too wide. But there, I listened to uh, Indian music, not only uh, because it was because Ravi Shankar was involved with the Beatles, um, but also some other aspects of it. Not in depth, but um, had a good glimpse. And that's where the Indian thing came from. Otherwise, so, I was, so what year was that? Uh, Seventy six. So that was that. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm in, instead of going to music college, which might have been a better option, I did philosophy at, at, at Exeter University. Went to India my, before going to university, and got badly bitten by Indian music. Uh, and al- along the way, I took a guitar with me, and and. Uh, uh, people started saying, well, you know, why, why, are you, why are you going to university when you can do that? And um, it, so it, worked, it began to work and I realised I could, I mean, I felt it, but I realised it also worked. So that, that was the beginning. So that was a, um, yeah, because I remember hearing a, uh, a story, I think we discussed it before, of Davy Graham, where he was already becoming kind of eminent as a folk guitarist in the UK. I guess this must have happened in the, uh, even in the late fifties or maybe early sixties. And then he, he went down to Australia for some gigs and they stopped to refuel in Delhi 
I think in Delhi and he got off the plane and just started playing and meeting people and didn't get back on the plane he just stayed in India for a while yeah I, I don't think that, I don't think he's that's I don't think he's the only person that kind of thing has, has happened to yeah uh, absolutely absolutely and um so it began a kind of long-standing passion then for India and for it, it, for the music and the culture and the people and for everything and, and and you know I suppose we should bring people up to speed in that you've you've spent more recently the last say particularly 10 or 15 years is that correct 15 spending time in 15 India 15 to 20 15 to 20 yeah. yeah um and so do you want to sort of talk about how this this recent that phase c kind of came into being how how did you come to mm. go to pune and and meet the so the guys that you know the guys that i met like Nitin well when so you i um i i uh i studied in in the uk eventually i had to bite this bullet because the vocal had disturbed me enough to say to people that i you know i i wanted to do this but i but i and I was always humming under my breath and, and listening to the listening to tapes, and eventually, but there's there's such different worlds that it 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 took a jump. I had to take this jump, and it took a while to do it, and and uh, huge cultural cultural jump as well in, in one's head. It wasn't if I'd done it when I was eighteen, it would have been easy. When I was out there the first time, but. By the time I'd done it, I was I was approaching thirty, and I went to learn at the Bharatya Vidya Bhavan, Bharatya Vidya Bhavan in 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 London, Indian Cultural Centre, and from there I started to learn the vocal. And now after um, um, after a few years, I mean, my teacher there, she uh, she thought her eyebrows raised. She thought, okay, maybe game is on here. Anyway, life intervened in various ways, and and it was a full. It was it was a decade before I kept it going. You got a bit every day, but but the intensity slackened, and I realised I was either going to lose it or I had to catch it again and work hard. So I jumped ship, if you like, from UK more and went to India to try and catch it again. So that's how it began. Okay, and then um, like, what were your leads? Like, how did you choose where to go? I mean, it's a massive place. Oh, uh, a visiting a visiting teacher, Seshadri Gavai. Was how I knew him, Seshadri Gavai. He, 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 he spoke a lot of a particular organisation there, temple, and a, a particular um, uh, his Guruji, who was in charge of the temple at the time, which was a teaching institution for the for blind and disadvantaged kids in northern Karnataka, uh, and his name was Puttaraj. Puttu Raj, and the Puttu Raj Mandir, that's not its full correct name, but it's in a place called Gadag, G-A-D-A-G, -A -A Gadag. And so when, it, when I jumped, and I liked him, and he liked me, and we got on rather well, and so when suddenly I decided I, I really wanted to uh, dive in the deep end a bit more, uh, I tipped up to see him in Bangalore, which was where he was teaching, um, his home, his childhood home, had been this Puttaraj Mandir, this Puttaraj temple, and they've got about a thousand pupils there. Half of them, are, half of them are blind. It's quite uh, interesting being there. And I went to see him, and a week before I arrived, he died. So I went to the temple instead of staying with him and started there. And that was in northern Karnataka. Um, and I also had some contacts in in Pune, Pune, which I wanted to make something of. So my life has been divided over there between Pune and Gadag. And you could say that's about it. Okay. And then, I mean, there was there was, there was a singing. Te there was a, a chap called Sh Shrikant Deshpande in Pune, who was in charge of the Savai Gandharva festival and, uh, um, as they say, the, the foremost 
or one of them certainly, a disciple of uh, Bimson Joshi. He became a good mate and uh, provided general guidance. And I learned through some, um, some of his Shisha disciples. Uh, so I, uh, and, uh, but I've had various teachers as we tried to find, as I tried to find a way to make my voice work. Okay, so the the emphasis to begin with was very much on the singing and developing the sort of singing techniques. That's a, that, that's a good point. Yeah, but uh, but uh, along the way, I I uh, I, I also decided um, to try and learn some tabla because without learn without knowing how the rhythmic structures work, you can't also you can't um, really get a grip of how the timing of the, of the vocal works, for one thing. I mean, you, you don't have to play tabla if you want to sing, but it's very, you've got to know the, how, the, the, the um, tals, the, the, the different rhythms, uh, skeletons for, of, upon which you hang the notes. Um, and without that, you know. And to give people a sense who don't know anything about this, how, from scratch, to learn these sorts of rhythmic patterns, I mean, how many are there? Like, how? I mean, of course, people's. I, I, I can't. I, I'm, I can't tell you how many. How many? How many there are? And you're not going to get a great deal of detailed uh, academic information out of me on, uh, uh, really. But uh, uh, I mean, the thing is, to, you know, just look it up in Google and see how many. You know, you can get that answer there. But there are there are some very basic ones which commonly get commonly get used. And that's Japtal, which is in ten, um, two sets of five. Uh, there's there's uh, Tintal. There's a nine. There's a nine beat one. There's a a fifteen, a fourteen beat one. Um, uh, uh, Rupak seven. Uh, um, uh, Dadra six. But the but the but the but the, but the ones I, I um and tw and the vilambit the long long uh, the the slow opening sections to rag where you can uh, you know the joke is supposed to be that you can make a cup of tea in between the beats it's not like that but uh, the 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 um, the thematic the t the tune the statement you want to make. Can be is it, it? It can take forty seconds to to state, and that goes round and round and round, um, and that's um, that's where the, the these rhythmic cycles are played very slowly. And commonly, uh, in, in performance at least, um, they're they're um, twelve beats, um, and, and, and tintal and japtal. And uh, I've, I've, because I'm slightly nervous now on, the, on this microphone, I've forgotten some of these, some of the names for the for the tiles. Yeah, no, no, no problem, no problem. We'll relax into it. But uh, I suppose it's just more to give people a sort of a general sense of what you know the waters one's sort of dipping one's toe into, in terms of like the enormity of and the complexity of these patterns and then how they're sort of implemented in the compositions and so on well you learn it step by step i mean you learn it orally as well i mean my one one of one of my main my main teacher uh nitin gaikwad um he the one i spent most time with when he learned from his teacher that he learned the words only and then so he learned the sentences and then had to go and practice the sentences at home. Very rarely did he actually play the tabla in front of his his teacher. That's not how I not how I learnt. But um, you, you have to learn the, the the sentences at the same time, if not first. You know. So while you were going through this kind of process of quite intense learning, were you? Did you? Were you? very very early on in the process still or starting to think about incorporating what you were learning with 
what you sort of grown up with so with the the folk guitar uh music that you were playing and so on or did that come a bit later no i i i i i'd um i'd already uh established a, 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 a possible dire direction that could allow for some involvement of an indian attitude um musically speaking but um i was very aware that uh, i needed to pick up on the the rhythmic side because uh and understand that because it, however if possible if it were possible however i was going to make some kind of attempt at marrying something i, I had to get the get, get the rhythmic thing ingrained somewhere inside me because as the trouble is as soon as you uh play a chord more than one chord in classical terms in, 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 and perhaps in, in indian music certainly the game is over you know so if you can't re if, if if there's immediately some kind of compromise which may which, which which will be far too easy to take in a direction which immediately destroys what you're trying to do in other words the bell just won't ring true the tabla at least isn't going to do that because you're not really talking a, a, a harmony with the tabla, although it does have some very strong notes in it. Um, so I needed to learn the tabla and to, to keep something of what I loved about India, Indian music in inside the music that I was trying to make and, and, and see how far I could um, push what I did within that that the boundaries in a sense established by the by the tabla but yeah that's that's really a, an interesting point and it's something that I've I've been sort of thinking about a lot and we've talked about this stuff before and it's really been quite thought-provoking for me um, and the, this sort of conundrum of working with pre-existing forms and then finding ways to identify elements that have a commonality between different schools and then finding that sort of happy point in the middle where you can blend in an, a sort of effective and meaningful way but it's interesting that that like like you're saying your your motive in that is is to preserve what you love personally because I, I feel like there's a there can be I can imagine anyway coming from the sort of world that you are and, and the way that you're approaching Indian music with such a huge amount of reverence and respect that that could almost be a kind of bur in itself a form of burden um, that sense of responsibility for for preservation and I've, I was thinking about it again today that for me when I'm creating and composing i i don't go out of my way to be offensive to anyone but i'm also not too preoccupied by what i should and shouldn't do you know i and i i do for me personally what i take to be a lot of my best work when i have this sort of slightly irre irreverent spirit of fun and exploration that's not overly laden with the feeling of oh what i shouldn't shouldn't be doing it's more it's not it's not that kind of mindset that i that i bring to it so i was gonna throw at you a quote from davy graham actually where he was um quizzed this is directly from the wikipedia page uh it says quizzed for instance on his davy graham's introduction of a chord progression into an arabic macam davy graham's amiable retort was to the effect that if he felt like it and it sounded all right why shouldn't he um and i i, I don't know I, I i i think it's just about like you're saying it, it ultimately for you it is just about wanting to preserve what's important for you personally from the music but it's not it is something different to learning a lineage of music to then pass it on yeah, I think I think uh, I think he's 
on one on one on one level, he's he's completely right. Um, on on the other, on the other the other the other side, the other view of it, or what you have to take into account, if it does feel right, then good. But you've got to really work out if the bell is ringing, ringing true to, to you, and if, and and if, for instance, the deeper you get into, or the more you appreciate. Uh, Indian music, for example, Indian music, or indeed, of course, all the way across the Middle East there um, to where Makans uh, and, and, and Egypt and so on, they don't really play chords and have harmony. Well, they definitely don't in the same way that we do. So they, have, they, they don't have tempered tuning. Now, once you get uh, used to tempered tuning... In other words, once it starts to sound rather, you know, really sweet, and you get, and no longer, and and you suddenly find yourself feeling at home, and and in this tuning, these different tunings, then when you return to, uh, for instance, when I used to come back to 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 England from six months in India, things used to sound out of tune, and it took a while. Uh, to get used to it again. I mean, it did take me years to learn to live in both worlds. So, I, while it's while if it sounds good to me and I and it and I feel it feels good to me and I can use it, that's a very good starting point. But uh, and that's essentially what I also do. But I'm also well aware that if I'm not actually trying to play Indian music, that's the main thing. I'm trying to take little elements of it, which which which. Open up in a way that that um, hint at something which is far bigger than what I'm able to able to show, and which still remains valid in 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 the limited way that I'm suggesting within what I'm trying to do with the guitar. Uh, it's a question of stumbling over the things which which make sense and. Uh, I mean, you, you, if you lose, if you lose the reverence for the or the, it's not so much the reverence; it's the understanding and appreciation of the original. You're never going to know if your if your bell is ringing true or not. Even you know. So. Yeah. It's no, a, no. 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 It I, is a problem. I, I mean, there are certain there are certain yeah. uh, scales, rags, tunes, whatever. Uh, which you, you're just never going to be able to... Re- it would make no sense, I think. I'm pretty sure <laughs> you can try, but it, it, it's going to be make no sense to try and translate them into a Western... Um, having a Western... Remotely have a Western accompaniment to them. Pentatonics, you know, they're you're OK, but they're worldwide. But as soon as you go further into into the subtleties of the, of the tuning of some of these t- tunes. For example, if someone really wants to... Uh, 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 Todi, that's T-O-D-I, Rag Todi. Check that out, somebody, and see if you can put some chords to that. You may think you have done, but by the time you've applied one, two chords, it's gone. It's disappeared like a ghost. The tune is gone. So, do you, yeah, no, no, that's fascinating. Thank you. Do you want to um, maybe talk a bit about the process more directly in terms of composition you can either pick a particular track or a particular album that you'd like to focus on or speak more generally like how how do you work how do you create well um uh, generally generally that comes from uh from hours and hours of just playing and practicing uh, uh, yes and then and then um uh in different ways, one one can be uh, um, rehearsing uh, as long as you're playing a lot, so that by the time you 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 you've stopped practicing a few little classical pieces, um, just to stretch your hand, in, my hand in different ways, and and you've mucked around with some of your own your past material, and you so that you're in you're in some kind of mood, and then you can then you can pick it pick up the guitar again and just. Allow your mind to drift, and 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 your fingers also. And if you if you, if through if through time accidentally you stumble 
and stub your toe, that's, that's, the, that's the stone you've got to pick up. And uh, it can be just a, a three notes which give you a feeling. So then you just proceed and keep, and if, and if it's more than three notes, if it's longer than that, then you've got to remember it. So you have to repeat it endlessly or press play and record and at least make a diary. And then gradually through time, purely accidentally, um, uh, you, I, I, you, um, I, uh, attractive items have, 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 dis have come along. Occasionally someone has written some words and... It doesn't happen very often, but instantly I, 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 I've grasped something which has made sense and married the two together. But more often than not, it, it is, it is a, uh, an ill-defined, in my case, ill-defined accidental, uh, well, ill-defined struggle which one hopes, uh, in which one relies on happy accident. Hours and hours of work and the occasional raised eyebrow and thinking okay let's work with that okay so that and that's for the um that first kind of spark will come from the guitar yes essentially hours and hours of playing and singing with the guitar so then so it's not until you have a kind of spark or the seed of something then you would take it to the guys take it to the the musicians and start to build it up from there or do you have it fairly well formed before you involve? Well, that, that's quite a good. That's quite a. That's, that's a good question because, um, so far, uh, but uh, well, that's a very good question because both sides, both you know, the Indian side, the the violin players, or in particular for the last album, because that's that I had. We had to really work at thinking what could they play to go with with the material, um, but the tabla also. This is where, you know, East and West, where do they meet? And, we're just, you know, we're both looking at an area which we can share. And so the, the tabla player, I go with things which are, which are generally uh, finished. So at least he has something, the tabla player has something to work on. And then we, we uh, and because this instrument is such a powerful instrument, the tabla, it, it can cast a, a, a very strong flavor, uh, like any. Uh, and so we, I try and find uh, a foundation to move, the, 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 to make a starting point in the song. If, um, uh, and, and uh, when that's ready, this is the way I've done it. When that's ready, often um, then the uh, previously at least the flute the flute player has simply had to deal with something which is ready, ready and finished for him to add things to. So my approach has uh, actually essentially been sort out the rhythm section and the guitar, and uh, any 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 if I've got a lyric line at that point, then that also will be a formative element everything else uh, slips in and gets and gets given less or more room within to operate okay interesting yeah so in terms of your creating the the kind of initial seeds growing and nurturing these first ideas do you would you still prefer to be out in india to do that Rather than do you, or do you, do you still compose when you're here and then travel back with some material ready to start working, or is it a mixture? Do you, or do you, do you find that you're more inspired when you're when you're there? I, I, uh, I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, it 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 um, here. I'm hearing more Western music. Um. And uh, and and uh, the, the fingers get less sweaty. I mean, literally. On, you know, so the guitar. It's it's easy, it's it's physically easier to play, <laughs> to play the guitar here, um, with with less humility and heat. But um, it, that composition. It just. It all depends where the where the where the where where, where the good ideas arise. Well, um, 
I think different different ideas arrive in different uh, arrive from me in different places. I'm not sh- I'm not sure which which side of the pond is uh, uh, the world. It's it, it's more creative for me, if you like. I suppose ideally, it sounds like having a mixture of both environments and worlds. Like the almost the contrast is what's as much of an inspiration as one or the other. Yeah, once once um. I mean, I, I I never really know, and uh, it, you know, one's fired up at different times, and and my I've got I've got a, a diary a diary full of a, a few notes which are, are building up, but um, to move from that to 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 making fully fledged tunes uh, is 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 a, is another as yes you know it's another step. I mean, maybe I should just sit in the recording studio with these guys and just play a few little ditties and 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 see and um but and and try and just create seven minutes of music or five minutes you know a number of different but it, I seem to want to try and say something with each tune uh, that is 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 more is more definite. Yeah, I understand. You've had something where you've had the time to kind of create the identity behind it initially. At yeah. Least. So it has some substance for yourself. It's part of yes, yourself. Yes, yeah, all of that. Yeah, I wouldn't be very very good at constructing um, music, uh, you know, to a deadline. I mean, well, I don't know. If people say that, but it tends to get things done. A deadline, you know. Um, so that's the composition, and then the recording. So of of course you are out there, and you have access to recording studios, and you have your own setup as well. Yeah. So you you have the means means to that yeah. end. And what's it what's it like recording in India? What are the studios like? What's the atmosphere like? Is it different to being here? I'm sure you can go to some very some very um, expensive studios if you want to. Uh, I I I don't I can't do that. Uh, but there's a there's a, a perfectly good um, studio in in Pune, um, which I have. Um, Constant, consistently used. Um, um, I could have experimented with other ones, but it, it's one of those things when you're tr- when you're alone abroad, if you like. Uh, it helps t- if you do have a, um, a friend or a filter for for uh, who you hope will tell you how it is, um, uh, rather than just give you uh, flannel. So through time, when you when you build up collections, you 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 um. Uh, it's nice to have that filter there, so he can suggest a player um, to try or uh, and so on, and uh, so it's been good. It's a, it's a, it's a noise in an Indian city. Oh, any city, but Indian cities are quite are, are uh, fairly bumptious, you know. Noise, so it's good to get out of the noise, obviously. And uh, and I also carry my carry my own stuff, which gets which is more complicated again because of noise. Um, so my own stuff gets t- tends to get used more for research, uh, and then and then and then making good in the in the environment environment of a studio. And then um, okay, so that's the composition and the recording. So do you want to talk a little bit more about performing live? So obviously we brought you over with Nitin. And you've toured in the UK, and you also toured in Germany, yeah, and so on. And and that, and then, how does that compare to performing in India as well? well? Some people assume uh, here, for instance, <laughs> they've assumed things like, "God, you must be huge in India," or something. Well, I suppose, I, I, in a way, I'm very grateful that 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 um, what I've that also there it's regarded as a bit strange in that um they want i think part of, part they definitely want to hang on to what they've got in a way the commercial world is burgeoning and uh, uh, and, and and pop tunes of course are are uh, 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 ever present but compared to here i mean i think this place in, is inevit- inevitably more broad-minded because it's less it's got less it's got less intrinsically english to lose 
if you like. Um, as, as a traveller, any tra one who's travelled will find that when someone says, show me something English, it's quite interesting how difficult it is to show something somebody English. Um, uh, but we have, you know, and, th and that, that has its benefits in, in, insofar as there's a broad palette which could make sense here. So I hope, and I think, judging from some of the reactions that we had, that what I did uh, over here, more often than not, worked in the sense of that, that bell ringing true, um, even though it's laced with the unfamiliar. So in that sense, it's different from play, playing in India. Um, not, um, so so I th I th at the moment, I'd say I, I can get a, a better, um, pro probably get a better reaction here in Europe than I could than I can do in India, but it's, I, I'm not I'm not entirely sure about that yet. Okay, interesting. And what about between here and Germany? Did you have a, a feeling, a different feeling? Germany, nah. Well, no, it's, it's, they were both both pretty good occasion occasionally actually. Uh, Bremen and the around surrounding areas, North Germany, uh, um, uh, very. Uh, Willing, willing ears, open minds, and 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 receptive. Actually, uh, very very good. Um, tend to, uh, it, it just depends where you're going to play. I mean, I think I think it is very noisy out there anyway, and the game is to try and catch the attention. Obviously, as a performer, within you know your first few breaths, you've got to try and catch people. And then lead them, lead them down the path. Um, you have good and bad uh, uh, um, experiences where you just can't stop the um, the the the, uh, the enjoyment that people are having from their from their booze and their social uh, life. Sometimes in certain venues, uh, that has happened, but luckily. Um, um, not enough to stop me trying to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, do you want to uh, now? Obviously, the last ten months or so have been terrible for a lot of people um, affected by the pandemic and so on. Now, coincidental to that, you've also had another fairly serious setback. I don't know if you want to talk about that, the accident and the hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I, a ladder, a ladder. Yeah, well, a ladder split on me, and I broke my arm, elbow, and wrist in about five places. And uh, the surgeon looked at the screen about two months after it happened. A little smile came over his face, and he said, uh, um, "A massive injury." He said, <laughs> "Gallows humour was required." Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a drag. It's only now, it's like it's 12, 4, 15 months later that I'm I'm actually, I actually think it's possible that I can, I can r really play again, I think. The left finger, the little fingers is mashed up still and it will never stretch the same way it used to, but I think, I think the game is on anyway. Fantastic. So you've had to use this time as a, a period of sort of forced convalescence given the situation. Yeah, but I think like, like, like a lot of people, it's been quite uh, um, strange, a strange experience em emerging into a silent world outside your door sometimes, although now it's not like that. But um, yeah, and uh, I, I just didn't allow myself to think for six months about I just read a lot of books and sort of didn't really look at my own situation too much because it was too depressing. I, I happened to read a uh, a big article in the I think it was the Financial Times today about India seems to have fared pretty well and it seems that the uh, virus situation is potentially burning out there basically I don't know I didn't I didn't hear that but I haven't no, noticed recently but good great well any good news is good news isn't it yeah you know. yeah so I, I suppose that. What what's your plan moving forward? Are you going to try and get out there as soon as possible? Well, I don't know. I think I think I, in order to keep this um, keep the ball rolling, that that that's a good idea. Uh, but I've got to get I've got to get my hand fully 
just a bit more operational, operational. But it, but it, but but I I I I I um. I would love to go again, uh, and try and keep this project rolling. Uh, you know, let's see if I can. I mean, it takes work. It, I've just got to keep. I've got there's another album which is just sitting there, really. So I've got to try and finish that, and uh, and uh, re, and 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 try and um, make another further step forward. So yes, I, I look forward to going again. And so, when you say there's another album, in terms of material you've already worked on with them, or yeah, um, although yes. Uh, but there's there's a few there's more tune there's a few tunes which I I need to get um, I need to blood with them I need to get I need to get the tabula working on a few more tunes which I haven't haven't yet tried with them uh, which I think will make sense and there's one central track which I haven't which was the foundation for starting any of this recording with with tabula which I haven't yet haven't yet um, I haven't yet released. Uh, or published rather, and it was it was because of that when I discovered that okay, I I, I felt I really had a runner in in the, in the in the project because of this one track, and uh, you know, so that I haven't I'm, <laughs> I haven't published that one yet. Something we've uh, I, I should tell people as well. So as well as being friends, I've also looked after your publicity and helped you organize tours and so on for my sins yes thank you so very much indeed yes. and uh, one one uh, point of tension between us is the uh the issue of length um and it's something i want yeah. to, i wanted to just i want to raise a question and then you can respond so uh, yeah. obviously in it's an interesting conundrum in music and in culture the it's kind of arisen in the last few years in this sort of digital age, the idea that people have very short attention spans and that you have to give them everything in two minutes or they'll turn off. And we could have got led to believe that in quite a fundamental way. And radio culture is still based around that principle, especially during the the daylight hours and so on. But and then, and then we've had the the phenomenon of Twitter and 140 character communication method. But then, out to everyone's surprise, actually the opposite has become equally as popular: the podcast phenomena. So people listening to these sorts of interviews for hours and hours. Some of them are two or three hours long, and actually, and they've been hugely popular much to the surprise of everyone, including the people making the stuff. So it's interesting that long-form art, long-form content, to give it that name, is does have its place and is much more popular than we, we might have expected. So, it, it's, I mean, in, for you in the way that you compose, is it a, a sort of a debt to the Indian methodology that that gives it that length or is that something that's more just part of you or is it both it it's it's um it's the way it's the way it's the way the tunes unfold and how li little different little different things occur along the way so like going for a walk you you, you notice different things along the part along the, along the route and if these if these didn't if these little accidents didn't crop up as I was rehearsing these tunes and trying to get inside them, it's like you do have to. I mean, you 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 put some things to one side, but if I think they if I think they're really worth including compositionally and remembering how to play them because you want to repeat them again, for instance, and so on, then. Um, these tunes, they when they when they're long, they have simply expanded uh, because I've thought that they've been worthwhile. Um, I, I I battle with it, and and they're not all, they're not all really long. But um, to get some of the subtlety, for instance, in the in, in the in the in the tabla and the ebb and flow of how they work, um, so they can tell their story, that seems to demand a certain amount of time. 
Uh, and I'm well aware that the, the, the commercial dimension of this is inviting trouble. Um, so ideally, I'd like to be able to make longer versions of things and then and 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 i have tried that once um i did try that with a lot with um uh a loving kind i i i sliced it up to try and give a four minute version of something which is also there at 16 minutes or something um uh so i'd like to try and make two different versions of things essentially <laughs> <laughs> no, no, fair enough. No, no, that's. But I, I'm not sure. I think good motorway music. I mean, rather, rather along a motorway, for instance, or you know, long music can work. Um, but the spoken word, I feel, I think there's more. I, I may be wrong, said, but I, 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 I think it's quite good to try and keep things as, as, uh, as in a way as short as you can for them to make sense. You know, it's very important that live you can get away with more. As long as you've hooked people into your your dream world, the world that you're trying to create musically, you know, um, I don't I don't really blame people for having short attention spans in uh, in other circumstances. So you've got to really make sure it's worthwhile what you're recording. I I try to. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, Fela Kuti, that guy. Several people asked him why he, why he was making tracks so long. You know, they seemed to get longer and longer the more he recorded. Um, and uh, I don't know what he said. Anyway, <laughs> do you um, just to sort of wrap this up? Um, would you have any? Because obviously, you've got a, a few different albums that you've published now that you've released and that we've promoted and so on uh, looking back across your catalogue I mean it's it's an interesting thing that the way that one sort of develops as an artist over time across multiple releases uh, I heard an interview with the electronic producer Fortet and he's been making music since the 90s and he he, he says he, I'm him saying he found it really interesting how he listening back across this sort of period of music making that it wasn't a simple sort of linear progression of one thing being better than the last thing in a straight line, a curve going up. He'd listen and he'd hear tracks that he made very early on on the most crudest of equipment. And he said that stands up as some of his best work right from the beginning. And all the way through, there would be certain tracks where he felt like he'd really sort of achieved what he wanted to achieve and he could stand by it whether it was 20 years old or made last week and there'd be other stuff made more recently that he felt like he sort of sold himself short I mean looking back over your catalogue do you do you have a feeling that it's been a sort of linear progression or do you feel like there's certain tracks from across the records that you're particularly proud of or how do you feel about it mm -hmm. Well, they, they, they've all, they've, they've all, car they've all, I've only recorded stuff that I felt had the necessary weight in them, in it, in it, uh, in, 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 in any given tune that, that it, it should, it, it, that it, it was the time to record it. It, it, it held its own. So after that, it's a matter of execution, and there are there are one or two only that I wished I hadn't recorded, that I could have done better, or I was too determined to shove it out there when I should have waited. Um, and that that the the, the the excellence or the validity of them, from my perspective, how they ring true. Uh, as you say, it doesn't really matter whether it's on a. I mean, the, a minimum standard of recording helps, but uh, it, it, it's all about the intent and the motivation and how it how it how it how it feels and how it, from from heart to fingertip how it goes and vocal cord how it goes down onto tape, if there be such a thing. So, are there are there any tracks that you'd like to revisit and re-record and kind of rework? No, not really. No, there's one. There's one, <laughs> there's one I wish I'd never recorded, but I'm not going to tell you which one that is. <laughs> uh, I love it. Fair enough. Um, 
And is uh, I mean, yeah, I, mean, I might re-record. There's one. There's, there's um. There's one which starts. It's got. To, it's, it's called Pretty Something. I'm not allowed to say the word on a radio program, probably. Uh, but I'd like to redo that in a, in a, in a, in a. It's already fairly overtly um, Indian, but. It's at the moment solo orientated. I'd like to perhaps put some harmonium in there, some tabla, and to see to see if it were possible in future. For that, I need an, uh, I need a uh, um, fellow players. When we're all looking at the right at the right direction, in the right same direction, we'll we'll have a go at it. Okay, and um, and so for people listening and they haven't heard of you before, and they're very excited having heard you talk about this, <laughs> uh, what you've been up to. If they had to, if they had, if they were concerned about the uh, length of their attention span, what one track would you point them towards? I'm going to put you on the spot here. If 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 someone was say, okay, this guy sounds interesting, I want to have a listen. Where should they start? But I don't want to spend 15 minutes listening to something. I look, I look at um, either two only. Um, indeed, indeed a track called Indeed, or No Time, those two. Okay. And they're, they're all on Spotify and available everywhere. They're widely available. Corre- correct. Correct. Lo- Loving Kind kicks off nicely too. There we go. Yeah, that's good. That's three. And um, the website's still up. I'm very pleased with the... Um, there's some sort of live snippets in that video we compiled from India... I think yeah, that was fun. That's fun. That's up on your website still as well, isn't it? So that's marcuscorbett.com. Yes, correct. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Marcus. Thank you for joining Well, thank you. Thank you for asking me not too many difficult questions. Well, huh. maybe we'll, um, next time we speak to you, you'll have made your next album and you'll be ready to promote it. Let's hope, yes. Let's hope so. Let's hope, indeed so, yeah. <laughs>